Hello, everyone. We are in the last day of this week. This is the uh, session number six. And we are going to end this week with this topic. Yesterday, we were talking about modal verbs and we- Good evening. Good evening. We talk about the modal, so do, so to neither either. Then we uh, were talking about modal verbs, will and will. And that's the topic that we are going to continue and the topic that we are going to finish tonight. So we are going to start with that topic that is the modal verbs. So let's see. We have the document here in which we were talking about the modal verb will and will. So yesterday we begin this topic and it says that we use will to make a request. Also, it says that the auxiliary verb for the future symbol. It can also be used when requesting someone to do something. Also, it says it is more casual to use will when we are talking about the future. We have three examples in this um, document. And the first one is, will you close the door, please? Will you help me cook dinner? And will he do the, his homework before we go out? So we are going to continue with these uses of will and will. We are going to do it part by part and then we are going to learn more about these modal verbs and what are the uses in some examples. So then after that, uh, we have these examples. We have another thing that we need to know about the will and will. It says, Will can also be used in similar fashion to can. We say that yesterday, that it have the same uh, with can. That is uh, when requesting someone to do something. In that case, when we use will, we also can use can because we are asking people to do something for us. Then we have will. Now we are going to talk about will. It is not the end of will because we are going to do and to know something else about will, but we need to introduce will also. So using will to make request. And it says, will is the auxiliary verb Inconditional. Teacher. Tell me. And we can use two modal verbs in the, in the same sentence. We can use it, but we can uh, separate them by clauses. In this case, we are not talking about clauses yet, but we can do it in this case with the clauses. Podemos hacerlo utilizando las cláusulas, que son oraciones que van unidas a veces por una coma, pero sí se pueden utilizar en una misma frase. Solo que las separamos, son parte de la misma frase, pero son como eh, cuerpos separados in this case. But we can use... Pero unidas no. Eh, in the same phrase, like eh, we are going to say, I would like to eat fish. Will no, in that case, not because it is something complicated. Podemos, okay. Nos podemos llegar a confundir o no vamos a encontrar qué decir con esa frase si utilizamos los dos condicionales de una sola vez. In this case, if we are going to use uh, different uh, I mean, different uh, auxiliary verbs or different uh, modal verbs, maybe. But it is better to separate them. Okay, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So, in this case, it says that the auxiliary verb inconditional, but may also be used when we make requests
Okay, in this case, it says, will is the auxiliary verb in condition algo may also be used when we may request in English. Obviously in English, because we are trying to talk up in English. So unlike will, using will is much more polite way to make your request to someone. That's something that we were talking. In will, it is like um, more casual. It is not like formal, but in this case, uh, the use of will, it's to make something more uh, polite. Para hacer un poco más, eh, um, in this case, we can say eh, amable. amable. We can uh, see that we can be more polite. Podemos sonar más amables when we are using will. And will is like plain, just to make a request. But when with will, we are going to sound more polite when talking with someone. So we have some examples. Would you close the door, please? Would you help me cook dinner? Will he do his homework before we go out? So in this case, we sound more polite when he ask something to someone. Then it says, we have a question. What is the best one to use? We have will and we have wool. And what is the best one to use? What is the best one to use? Let's see. It says, you can obviously use will on wool at your discretion. Although it is much more recommendable to use wool when you are making requests to people who are not familiar with. So listen. In this case, we can uh, use will or we can use will. That is something that we can decide. That is not something that we can say, oh, it is better to use will or it is better to use will. In this case, we are going to use them if we feel good with that uh, expression. Maybe we feel better using will or we uh, feel better using will. But in this case, it says, it's better to use wool when you are requesting something for someone that you are not familiar with. In this case, it's some, someone in the street, someone in your work, someone that you are not familiar with because it is more polite. So, in este caso, utilizamos will and wool según nos parezca a nosotros, ¿verdad? Si a mí me gusta más will, yo voy a utilizar will. Si a ustedes les gusta más wool, pueden utilizar wool. Pero se... Eh, El consejo que se da es que utilicen wood con personas que no son familiares. O sea, que no, no tienen esa conexión o no son eh, muy conocidos con esa persona y pueden utilizar el wood para hacer eh, estos requests. And it says, will will be more with people who you have a comfortable, common relationship with. So will is for people that you have years knowing or you feel familiar or feel comfortable with them. So, uh, we can see like this. It's much, it's much more recommendable to use wool people
Okay, that's the, the thing. Will for people that you are not familiar with and will is for people you are familiar with. That's simple, but you can use whatever you want. It's like uh, you feel good or better with one of them. It's good you want to use whatever you want. So I will mark this because it's better to understand the uses of will and will. So let's see. Then we are going to say the uses of each one of these, the uses of will, the uses of will. Because we are saying that we use will for requests, but also we have another uses for this one. And uses, we are going to see the uses. We use will. And we use it for express belief. Talk about what people want to do or are willing to do. And to make promises. offers and requests. Okay, in this case, we are going to use will for these uh, uh, three moments. First, to express belief about the present and the future. This is something that we think will happen, maybe in the present, maybe in the future. That is something that I feel. That is something that I uh, think it will happen. Vamos a utilizar el will para eh, las cosas que nosotros creemos sobre el presente y el futuro. Number two, to talk about what people want to do or are willing to do. Para hablar de la, lo que las personas van a hacer o que están supuestos a hacer. And number three, to make promises, offers, and requests. Para hacer promesas, ofertas, o para las peticiones. So in these cases, we are going to use will for beliefs uh, to talk about what people uh, want to do and to make promises and to make offers and to ask a request. Then we are going to use will, but in this case, we are going to have uh, something, uh, explain something about will. And it says, will is the past, Tense form of will, of course. And it is used for the uh, following things. We have number one, to talk about the past. Number two, to talk about hypotheses. And for politeness. So in this case, it says that will is the past tense of will, is the past. So uh, knowing this, uh, that will is for past tense, we are going to use them to talk about, uh, about the past. That is very uh, simple to know because we are using a past tense. Then to talk about hypothesis, something that we imagine and also for politeness. So, el will lo vamos a utilizar ya que estamos hablando de que es el pasado para obviamente hablar de cosas del pasado, para hablar de hipótesis, cosas que nosotros creemos pero que no están 100% seguras a pasar y para cosas, ¿verdad? Para hacer, sonar más amable. Then, belief. We are going to talk about belief. We are going to divide all the things about will and will 
with these uh, kind of actions. So we have beliefs. Las cosas que nosotros creemos, ¿verdad? Cosas que creemos que van a pasar. We use will to express beliefs about the present or the future. That is the first one that we have in the uses of will. And it says that we have some examples. Let's see, number one, it says, John. John will be in his office. And this is present. Then we are number two, we will be late. And in this case, it is future. Then we have, we will have to take the train. We will have to take the train. And it is also future. And number four, I mean, number we have just three. In this case, we are going to see in the number one, John will be in his office. Why this sentence is in present? Because maybe we are talking to someone and that person is asking about John or where is John? And we say, John will be in his office. When? Now, in this moment, not in the future. And that's why we are using the present time. Then we will be late. We are going to be late. That is in the future when we don't know, maybe in two hours, maybe tomorrow. So in that case, we are talking about the future. Then we will have to take the train. When? Maybe tomorrow because we are going to a meeting or something else. En este caso, estamos utilizando el will para las creencias, para algo que creemos que va a pasar. En este caso, en la número uno, eh, lo utilizamos como presente porque estamos hablando de algo que puede estar pasando en este momento. John will be in his office. Why? Because he's working and we think he is in his office. En la número dos, vamos a llegar tarde. ¿Cuándo? Pues obviamente en el futuro porque no podemos utilizarlo en el presente. Porque es una acción que no está pasando, sino que va a suceder. Then, we will have to take the train. Tenemos que tomar el tren. Vamos a tener que tomar el tren, porque si no, nos vamos, nos vamos a ir tarde. So, that's in the future. Then, we use will as the path of will to describe past beliefs about the future. In this case, we use will. To describe past beliefs about the future. And we have an example. I thought we will be late. So we So in this case, we are talking about something that we think in the past that will happen in the future. So it says, I thought we will be late, so we will have to take the train. Pensé que íbamos a estar tarde o que íbamos a llegar tarde. Así que tuvimos que tomar el tren. So talk about beliefs in a past time that we think will happen in the future. Then. We have another one. We have another of the uses. But in this case, just remember, we are going to do it part by part. So we are going to, uh, uh, in some way, slowly. So 
the first thing we are uh, talking talking about beliefs that is one of the things because if we can see the uh, uses of will we have that in the first place so we are going to do it by parts because we have a a lot of information about the uses of will and the uses of will so in the second one we have willingness willingness and this word in spanish we can uh, translate as voluntad disposición a uh, predisposición or disponibilidad so we are going to talk about in this case we can say uh, la disposición que tiene alguien de hacer algo so in this case first we use will to talk about what people want to do or are willing to do. So this is the second one of the uses of will, willingness. So we are going to use will to talk about what people want to do or are willing to do. That is something different because in the first phrase, eh, we have that people want to do something and they are really eh, interested in doing that thing. But in the second one, what people are willing to do, maybe they want to do, but that is not possible. So vamos a hablar de, la, de lo que las personas quieren hacer o que están dispuestas a hacer, porque estamos hablando de la disponibilidad, pero que no siempre puede llegar a realizarse por cuestiones de tiempo o uh, anything else. So we have the first example. We have number one, we will see you tomorrow. So in this sentence, we can see that we are going to talk about the two situations. Maybe uh, we are in the same place or we are studying, uh, studying in the same place or we are working in the same place or we live in the same town. So it says, we will see you tomorrow. Te voy a ver mañana. That is something that I want to do. Ver a esa persona. Quiero ver a esa persona el siguiente día. But if we are talking about willingness, we want to see that uh, person, but maybe she can go to the, the same place or she has something to do and I can see that person. So that's two different things. Then we have the other example, perhaps that would land Okay, perhaps that will lend me the car. The car. In this case, it's something that we are not really sure that will happen. And maybe this is talking about willingness because we need to know if that can uh, give us the car. And it is uh, talking about if he is happy or he is angry or if he, uh, he is um, he wants to do it. En este caso de que el papá le puede prestar el carro, pues estamos hablando de disposición. Puede que lo haga, puede que no lo haga, dependiendo del humor o de la situación. Then it says, to talk about typical behavior, things that we often do because we are willing to do them. So we also use will to talk about typical behavior. Un comportamiento típico. Things that we often do because we are willing to do them.
Okay, in this case, we are talking about typical behavior. That is something that we are willing to do because that is very common to do it. So we always spend our holidays at our favorite hotel at the seaside. In this case, we have this sentence. Let's see this example. We always, we have an interesting word here. We always, this word makes sense in everything uh, 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 way. Because we're saying that we have a typical behavior and this word always uh, makes sense because we do it every day, all the time. Or we have this specific uh, celebration every year. We always spend Okay, we have uh, something that is common to do. In this case, we have this example. We always spend our holidays at our favorite hotel at CSI. This is like um, something that we did in all we do regularly. In this case, we are using the word always. Estamos hablando de un eh, comportamiento típico de cosas que hacemos con regularidad porque estamos dispuestos, tenemos la disposición. In this case, we are talking that we have that specific time to do it. Estamos hablando de las vacaciones. Y in this case, we are saying that these people are doing this every year or every time they have these holidays. Ellos tienen estas vacaciones y siempre lo repiten todos los años en las mismas fechas que van a un hotel a la playa. So in that case, we are talking about typical behavior because uh, we repeat that actions every year and maybe every month or something like that. Then we have, it continues saying that we will get out, we will get up, We will get up early every morning and have a quick breakfast. Then we will go across the road to the beach. So we have the whole thing here. So if you can uh, separate the, the phrases they are using to describe the situation that happens in the holidays, we can see that that is something that they really did in the past or they are doing in the present and they will do it or will uh, do these actions in the future because they uh, perform this action every time they go to this hotel. So we are going to mark the sentence in which we are using will. So we have here, we will get up early. So we have the first uh, use here, then it says, um then we will go across the road. So we have some actions that they perform in this, this specific time. We always spend our holidays at our favorite hotel at CSI. That is the first action. They always do this. Then they will get up early every morning. They have this schedule for the vacations. They will get up early. 
Then they will have a quick breakfast and then they will go across the road to the beach. First, they have this situation every year. Then the whole time that they have these uh, vacations, they will get up early to have a quick breakfast. And then they will go through the road to the beach. So in that case, we are talking about um, typical behavior that they repeat every day when they are on the vacations. So let's see. Then it says to talk about To talk about what people want to do, we are now talking about wool. In this case, we are at wool. So it's it to talk about what people talk about what people wanted to do or were willing to do in the past. So in this case, we are not using will. We are going to use will because we are talking about the past. But it's the same situation about the willingness. And it says to talk about what people wanted to do or were willing to do in the past. Estamos hablando de la disposición que eh, se tenía en el pasado para hacer algo o que se quería hacer algo. So let's see the example. Let's see. We had a terrible night. That's a bad situation. Uh, just uh, beginning the, the sentence. We had a terrible night. Then it says the baby wouldn't go to sleep. Wouldn't go to sleep. So we have this situation. We had a baby, we had a terrible night, and the baby wouldn't go to sleep. We are using a wool with the negative because we have wouldn't. So in this case, we are going to mark this structure. We have wool and we have not because we are uh, doing negative. So tenemos aquí la estructura porque estamos utilizando el negativo wouldn't, wool plus not. So in this case, it says that the baby wouldn't go to sleep and that, again, negative, and that wouldn't lend me the car. It, this is the, the last, the second one. Lend me the car. So we had to take the train. Okay, in this case, we have two situations in the same sentence. In the first one, it says, we have a terrible night. Tuvimos una noche terrible. The baby wouldn't go to sleep. That is the, uh, in this case, uh, the effect for that, um, that terrible things. So in this case, the king is la disposición del bebé because she or he wouldn't go to sleep. No estaba en la disposición de dormir. So in that case, we are going to use will because it is in the past. La disposición, el bebé no quería dormir. So in the second one, that wouldn't lend me the car, so we had to take the train. Papá tampoco estaba en la disposición de prestarme el carro, así que tuvimos que irnos en tren. We are talking about willingness. Then, the second situation, it's always talking about typical behavior because we are repeating the situation, but not with wool. It says to talk about to talk about typical behavior. Things that we often did. Y 
because we were willing to do them. In the past. Now it is not in the future, this is in the past. So we have the example. So we are going to um, going to write the whole example, then I will separate the sentences. So it says, when they were children, when they were children, they used to spend their holidays at their grandmother's at the CSI. They will get up Then they they will run across the road to the beach. So we have here the example. It says, when they were children, they used to spend their holidays at their grandmother's at the seaside, they will get up early every morning and have a quick breakfast. Then they will run across the road to the beach. So we have here the instructors. They will get up early and then we have, they will run across. So in this case, we are talking about something that happened in the past because the, we are talking the things that the children did in the past. So when they were children, they used to spend holidays at their grandmothers. That is something um, common for them to do it in the past. Then they will get, get up early because they want to go to the beach to play. And then they have a quick breakfast and they run across the road to go to the beach. So in that case, we are talking about the situation that happened in the past. And we are uh, maybe talking like uh, um, some memories. So that's the point. Bien, en ese caso, ya vimos que tenemos el, las mismas situaciones para el will y el will. Son las mismas acciones, solo que los estamos dividiendo en presente, eh, I mean, en, en futuro y en pasado. Then, we have another one that is promises, offers, and requests. That is another one of, of the uses of will and will. Promises, offers, and requests. And we have, we use, I will, I will, or we will to make promises and offers. So we have two expressions. Utilizamos estas dos expresiones, I will or we will, para hacer promesas y para los eh, ofrecimientos, para ofrecer algo. And we have the examples.
we have number one. I will It says, I will give you a lift home after the party. In this case, it is a promise because we are going to a party and then I will um, take this person home. This is a promise. Voy a llevarte eh, a casa después de la fiesta. That is a promise. Then number two, we will come. We will come and see you. next week. Vamos a venir y te veremos la próxima semana. Esa es una oferta. For example, I want to go to someone's house and I see uh, and say that we will come and see you next week if you want to receive us in your house. Then we have this one that says we use wheel Will you, this expression, will you? With a question mark. Or will you, with a question mark, to make request? Examples. Number one, would you carry this for me? Number two, would you please be quiet? Okay, in this case, this is a, for making promises and, and uh, requests and offers. So we use for this, um, for offering requests, we use I will or we will para las ofertas y las, um, en este caso, para las promesas y las ofertas, utilizamos I will or we will para las, um, los requests usamos will you or will you. Cuando pedimos que nos ayuden con algo. Then, we have almost the last part because we are going to end this topic. Then we have the hypothesis. Vamos a hablar de hipótesis. Hypothesis. And conditionals. And it says, we use will in conditionals to say what we think will happen in the present or future. Okay, we have two uh, sentence in this case. You are uh, seeing just one, but we can separate them. So it says that we will 
that we use will in conditionals to say what we think will happen in the present or future. Vamos a utilizar el will eh, para decir lo que pensamos que va a suceder en el presente o en el futuro. In this case, we have an example. Let's see this example. It says, I will give her a call. We have number one here. But what is the result of the sentence? If I can find her number. So I need to find the number to give a call. So in this case, we can separate the sentences with the if, because it is the connection between them. So I will give her a call. That is one sentence. If I can find her number. In this case, I, I want to do something, but in this case, I need to find the number first. So it's something that will happen in the future. La voy a llamar si puedo encontrar su número. That's something that will happen in the future. Because if I can find the number, then I will not call. So in this case, it is something that will happen in the future. Then we have the other one that says you won't get in. So here, you won't get in unless you have a ticket. In this case, we're using the negative form of will. You won't get in because you don't have a ticket. So you need a ticket to get in. That is something that will happen in the future because we are going to uh, buy the ticket if we want to get in the place. En la segunda oración, no podemos entrar porque no tenemos un ticket. ¿Qué va a pasar? We have two possible uh, answers. One, we are going to buy the ticket and then we are going to leave. That is something possible. Tenemos dos opciones. Una, compramos el ticket y entramos o simplemente no nos vamos porque no nos dejaron entrar. Then it says that we use a will to make hypothesis. And we have number one, when we imagine a situation. Okay, in este caso estamos hablando de hipótesis. Number one, when we imagine a situation that is not a 100% real because we are imagining something. So in this case, we use will. And we have the example, it says, uh, it will be very expensive to stay in a hotel. Okay, it will be very expensive to stay in a hotel. Why this uh, sentence is something uh, imaginary? Because we uh, don't have the, um, the information and maybe we don't uh, stay in a hotel never in our life. So in this case, it's something imaginary because we don't have the experience to stay in a hotel room and we don't uh, know uh, how much uh, a room will cost. En esta situación es imaginaria porque no tenemos la experiencia, no nos hemos quedado en un hotel, no hemos hecho las cuentas de cuánto podríamos gastar en el hotel. So in that case, it's something imaginary because we don't have the experience or we don't have enough information to um, know how much cost a night in a hotel. And also it depends on the um, on the hotel that we are uh, searching or the kind of hotel that we want to stay in. Then we have another sentence. I will give you a lift. Oh, this is very, um, let's see, let's see. I will give you 
I will give you a lift, but my wife has the car today. So in this situation, it's something um, imaginary because it's, um, I can do it, but in this moment it is impossible. I will give you a lift. Te daría un aventón. En este caso lo podemos llamar así. Te daría un aventón, but my wife has the car today. Pero mi esposa tiene el carro hoy. So I can do it. It's something imaginary because I wanted to do, but it is impossible for me because I don't have the resources to do it. So that's something imaginary. Then we have another one. It says in conditionals, number two. In conditionals, it says, I will give her a call if. I will give her a call if I could find her number. If I had the money, if I had the money, I will buy a new car. You will lose Okay, in conditionals, and we have some examples here. And it says, I will give her a call if, si. Sí. Le daría una llamada, o le, voy, o, o le iba a dar una llamada, si sí, hubiera podido encontrar su número, si. Sí. Conditionals, they are the connection between the two parts of the sentence. If I had the money, si yo tuviera el dinero, I will buy a new car. Hubiera comprado un carro nuevo. You will lose weight if you took more exercise. Hubieras perdido más peso si hubieras tomado más ejercicio, si hubieras hecho más ejercicio. If he got a new job, he would probably make more money. Si él hubiera eh, tenido un nuevo trabajo, él hubiera probablemente hecho más dinero o ganado más dinero. What if he lost his job? ¿Qué pasa si pierde su trabajo? What will happen then? ¿Qué pasaría entonces? And in that cases, we are using the, uh, the situation, ¿qué pasaría si? That's something imaginary that can happen. But it, it is also imaginary because we don't have a, a response for that. So, we have the last part, expression with will. This is the last part. And we are going to end this topic because we have some uh, minutes more and it is almost time to end this session. So we are going to end with, with this, that is the expressions with wool. And it says we use, will you, Would you mind? 
And we can also, will you might not, in ING form, or request. And we say, will you carry this for me? So in this case, we are using the ing form of the verb that is known as gerund. So in this case, we are going to write this sentence using will you and a mind with ing form. In this case, we are going to use the verb with the ing form and negative form of these uh, verbs. So we are going to uh, end the session and I will send you the document in which we are going to find a lot of information about the topics that we were developing this week. Also, you are going to find more information that we were not discussing in the sessions. So we are going to see each other on Monday. Remember to work in the platform because it is very important to do it. And uh, also, we are going to develop another uh, topics the next week. So have a really good night uh, and have a good uh, weekend. So we are going to see each other on Monday. So good night and let's say goodbye. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Monday. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night teacher. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night.